the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior, and extend to you my warmest greetings during this Pentecost event in our church. Now, allow me to share with you, to start our reflection, a story based on actual events. Many years ago, an unfortunate maritime tragedy happened. A ship sailing in the Visayan seas encountered a bad storm. Strong winds, heavy rain occurred in the middle of that trip. The ship, in the midst of that weather disturbance, encountered as well a fatal engine trouble that it actually ended up in it gradually sinking under the water. The situation was terrible because this was night, nighttime and the waves were strong. One of the passenger is a young girl soon to enter high school. She was just traveling to catch up with her family who went ahead for their vacation. Like many others, she panicked and she jumped into the water. And immediately, upon hitting the water, the wind tossed her about, you know, and then the waves swallowed her because she does not know how to swim. As she was sinking under the water, one of her last thoughts was how sad for her to die at a young age without even fulfilling her dreams. Then she faded into unconsciousness. The next time she regained consciousness, she was vomiting water. She knew, she was a smart girl, that some kind of CPR or mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation was done. This was the reason she survived. Medical science was her favorite subject and she wanted to be a doctor someday. She only saw a glimpse of the face of the one who saved her. Seems to be a young teenager, a little bit older than she was. Then she lost consciousness again. The next time she awoke, she was already in the hospital, surrounded by her family. So, brothers and sisters, to cut the long story short, she was one of the few fortunate survivors. She survived this maritime tragedy, and she eventually grew up to be one fine Christian lady. In fact, she became a beautiful doctor expert on the lungs, a pulmonologist doctor. She had lots of suitors, but none interested her. To the shock of her close friends, she announced to them one day that she found the one, the one she would be getting married to. And they were really shocked because the man was not so handsome compared to others, no celebrity, not very popular, not even so muscular. And so they egged her, pushed her to tell them the reason for choosing this particular person. She then smiled. But she was radiant in that smile and replied, Remember when I was small, I nearly died by drowning at sea. I awoke at a nearby island and was saved by CPR. There was a teenager who was the one who saved me that day. I finally discovered the identity of the one who saved me. It is the man I am going to marry. So they were able to trace that that young man was actually living in that small island where the tragedy happened. And they were able to connect the dots and found themselves again after so many years. It was the same man who was a teenager then who through CPR helped her survive. I choose him because he extended my breath with his breath. It's only natural, she explained to her friends, that I spend the rest of my life with the one who made me breathe again. Wow, it's a bit cheesy to start our reflection and during Pentecost with a love story, but notice three important points. 
first, drowning because of the lack of air. Second, the CPR to infuse air to make the lungs function again to survive. And the choice to live the rest of her life to be with the one who made her breathe again. First, we may not know the horrors of drowning, but we know how pain can make our being feel like we're running out of breath. We usually find in literature the expression, I'm drowning in sorrow. I am overwhelmed by pain. I am sinking in my despair. Those are expressions we would be familiar with when we are suffocated, when we are overwhelmed by so much heartache. And so here, the drowning, when one discovers betrayal, we pound our hearts and feel like we're running out of breath. It's just so hard to breathe. When there's so much pain, we feel like life is being sucked out of ourselves and we're paralyzed. We cannot move. As if oxygen is compromised, there is a psychological and psychosomatic connection. When we experience deep tears and crying, you know, we cry from the guts. <sighs> no, it's as if we're running out of breath, we're catching our breath. And yes, when we feel there's no more reason to live for, in a very, very sad way, jumping over the bridge becomes a viable option to drown ourselves and to drown our sorrows away. Breathing then, brothers and sisters, is hard when we are hurting and when we are overwhelmed by pain. Precisely in this moment, we are not left orphans. Christ breathes upon us the gift of the Spirit, the Advocate, our Helper. CPR, which for those who have medical background means cardiopulmonary resuscitation, in the context of the Pentecost celebration may well mean, are you ready for this? C, Christ, P, provides our respiration. Christ provides breathing again. Christ makes us breathe again. Respiro, I breathe again because of Christ. The action of Christ on the apostles is that before he left for the ascension, he breathed into them his spirit. At Pentecost, the rush of the wind, like breath from on high, empowered the apostles hiding, afraid and weakened. Instead of dying, their faith was renewed and they were all empowered to go to the ends of the earth to testify for the Lord. Imagine that hiding, constricted space, you know, covered by the walls. And the wind, the rush of the wind, the Spirit, breathing fresh air. And then empowering them to breathe again. To be filled with the purpose to proclaim the good news. And to surrender to that power wherein Christ accompanies them with the gift of the Spirit. It's a beautiful imagery of Christ providing the gift of breathing again for the apostles. And so at Pentecost, we celebrate precisely this theological truth that instead of dying, their faith was renewed and they were empowered for mission. The third moment of the story is the choice of the lady to live the rest of her life with the one who extended her breath. It's a beautiful love story that natural choice of her heart and her being is to live the rest of her life with the one who extended her breath or who gave her the gift of new life again. Now, brothers and sisters, it is also a choice given to you and to me as we celebrate Pentecost. It can be a choice of allowing our lives to be devoid of the presence of the Holy Spirit or to allow ourselves to be filled by the Spirit, to be Spirit-driven and Spirit-guided. It can be a choice between despair and 
inspire. Now, this is very, very strong words, but notice it's connected with the action of breathing. The state of drowning can represent the state of despair. Despair, they say, is the potion served best by the devil. It is devastating because once it seeps in and takes hold of our soul, it can suck out the passion in life, the joy in relationships, and the purpose of our existence. Even if we examine etymology, de sperare, from the old Latin expression, de, the absence or the lack, sperare, breathing. It is very important to note that even etymology would point that sperare is connected to the word spirit. Sperare, breathing. And so despair sucks out the breath of life within. We have seen how many people were victimized by despair and would look for answers in drugs, alcohol, and illicit relationships. And even in extreme cases, are pushed to consider ending their lives. For those who have experienced grief, loss, betrayal, you and I know how despair can be powerfully devastating at times. But the good news is, Jesus breathes new life into us, healing and strength. When we choose to believe this in our hearts, then from the spare, we can be inspired. Again, etymology, in, sperare. Notice the same root verb, now breathing into, in, into, breathing. Jesus did this. No? Notice how uplifted we are because we encounter an individual who is inspired and inspiring. That person is exuberant in joy even amidst adversities, still in love despite past hurts, and still passionate through the years in serving because of their faith. We encounter this in an original and powerful way from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so here, the movement to choose to be inspired is this. When we accept this gift of the Spirit, when we recognize that Jesus breathes unto us the gift of the Spirit, then we can all live to be inspired. This is the key. During this Pentecost, my brothers and sisters, in conclusion, let us accept this gift of the Holy Spirit in the church and the gift of the Holy Spirit offered personally to you and to me. The truth of the matter is, we cannot sometimes avoid being drowned by tears and sadness. But we can always have the CPR to help us survive. Meaning for us spiritually, Christ provides respiration. Christ provides breathing again through the Holy Spirit. It only makes sense then for Christian believers to choose to live the rest of our lives with the one who has extended our breath, the one who saved us, the one who made us breathe again. Pentecost then, in the context of this narrative of survival, being helped to breathe again, is our own love story too, correct? And I hope you agree with me on that. The love of Christ for you and for me, sealed by the Holy Spirit. When we believe this, then we can overcome despair and instead inspire. With the Holy Spirit, we can be inspired and inspiring. So help us God. The Lord be with you. And may our loving God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.